Let's say you just bought a house. Bad news is, you're one step closer to becoming your parents. You'll proudly mow the lawn. Ask if anybody noticed you mowed the lawn. Tell people to stay off the lawn. Compare it to your neighbor's lawn. And complain about having to mow the lawn again. Good news is, it's easy to bundle home and auto through Progressive and save on your car insurance. Which, of course, will go right into the lawn. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company affiliates and other insurers. Discount not available in all stages situations. Yo, what up? It's your boy. Coming at you like Thor in a windbreaker. Wielding the Stormbreaker. Coming at you with the new Brothers Commonplace episode. Now, originally I had planned to give a nice heartfelt... Serious message right here, something I wanted to get off my chest. It was about the topic of slavery, but Kanye already came out and word for word said what I was going to say, so I guess I'll just, <laughs> just joking. But anyways, this is our disclaimer saying that we are a comedy podcast and we do cover crimes, so we will be talking about serious events, but we will be making some jokes and we're not here to purposely offend or disrespect anybody, so... Have a listen, have some fun, and be good, stay safe, and laugh at the dark stuff. Hashtag wild man, hashtag pretzel dog, hashtag Miss Cleo. Alright, fellas, like we practiced. Yeah. Two, three, four. Come on down. Come on down. Hanging with the brothers tonight, yeah. Come on down to the brothers coming place. Alrighty, welcome everyone to The Brothers Commonplace, a comedy and crime podcast where we cover monsters, murders, mysteries, and more. And today we got a tripod of sexy boys, the food group of brothers. So let's go ahead and say hello to my only friends. What's going on guys? This is Tim and uh, actually kind of had like a pretty cool realization the other day. I always had this this nickname that people started calling me in middle school. It's probably about like 97. I was wondering like, what the hell does this nickname mean, you know? And I never really had, like, a chance to ask, like, a lot of people. I never had, like, a platform to do that. We have, what, like, 13 or 14 listeners now. So I figured, <laughs> you know, I can do – I just ask you guys. I need to know why they started calling me Sally Can't Dance. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, yeah. Hey, I hate guns. Oh, fuck yes, dude. <laughs> fuck yes. I'm so glad you knew who that was. Hey, everybody. It's The Tooth on my way here. I was like, I need a good opening. I was like, I'm going to come up with my own joke, you know? Maybe not exactly PC, but let's see if it gets a couple laughs, all right? What does a clown and a lesbian have in common? Oh, Jesus. They both get pies to the faces. <laughs> oh, God, yes. <laughs> oh, oh, fuck how yeah. you yelled it. That was awesome. Fuck yeah. Hopefully none of our listeners are offended by that. We have a lot of lesbian listeners. That's a pretty funny joke. Well, I don't think no, my, I like I don't, it. I don't think my mom listens. No. <laughs> <laughs> she just sleeps with everyone here. <laughs> I'm just joking. And it's your boy. It's Kevin, a.k.a. K-Dog. And I just want to clear some stuff up. Like the dog part of my name, it's just a nickname. I'm not an actual dog. So Whitney, Wisconsin, you can go ahead and quit emailing Aww. me and contacting me. Like I'm flatter, but I'm not interested. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what that is. Yeah, that's a good she's, one. Uh, <laughs> she's, this, she's this girl who's like who like fucks her dog oh. and has videos and shit of it. This is a thing. She's disgusting. She like drinks like like cups of dog piss and shit. Yeah, she so. like. She's also known for like finger banging herself at stores and like like you like you like my perfume and like making guys smell her fingers and shit. She's disgusting. Holy yeah. shit, dude. Yeah, That's... she's pretty fucking nasty. Wow. You you guys got her phone number at all or <laughs> No, nah, just I'm like, asking for a friend. Just probably like a 4 gigabyte file if you need it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, here's my phone if you want to call her. It's, uh just go to the M's it's under mom. I'll just check it you know that's not true. I love you, mama. Dude, you know what I was thinking about earlier today? I don't know why, and it just really fucking grossed me out. Like, imagine how disgusting the movie Jack would have been <laughs> if after he graduated, like, all those, like, the, all the students that just graduated, they all went to, like, a like a post-graduation <laughs> party, and he fucking got laid at it. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be fucking gross. Like fucking 90. That Dude. would be so gross. You ready? Good, good for him, though. Uh, yeah. You ready, Kev? Yeah. P- 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 go up to the mic, man. I, this is a good one. Yeah. So uh, I heard Whitney Wisconsin was a Browns fan, right? Yeah. Oh, because I always heard she was a fan of the Dog Pound. Oh! <laughs> yes. Fuck yeah. That was awesome. 
uh by the way just going back to the uh the jack thing um imagine if like that was still going on and like it, it was the end it was like graduation and stuff like that but then they just did the uh the whole like story of american pie <laughs> i uh i laughed at the joke but what is jack robin williams robin williams ages like 10 times quicker than everyone else so in hu- when he's in high school he looks like he's like 80 years old it seems like I'm, I'm pretty sure I've seen this, but I forget all of Jennifer it. Jennifer Lopez all of it. is in it. He yeah, asked her to the dance, and yourself. she said no, and he had a heart attack. Yeah, I was just I was gonna <laughs> talk I was gonna talk about how that was a family friend friendly scene, and then you you told the end before I could say anything. All righty, join us. Take a trip with the brothers as we go to the cemetery today. We talk about a story of love, a story of heartache, heartbreak, sadness, and romance. Stop in the name of love. He would not. We are talking about Carl Tanzler, The Notebook, The Vow, A Walk to Remember. (laughs) None of those have shit on this story because none of those stories had Carl Tanzler, the ultimate romantic man, the man that would do anything to preserve the memory of his one true love. Cemetery lady, my cemetery girl, oh, yeah. cemetery lady, I, I want, want you in my world. world. I think we better dive in, Tim. How far should we dive in? Ed Gein far. Uh, yeah, well, yeah, I was going to say six feet deep, but this guy <laughs> does remind me of Ed Gein a lot. <laughs> I was going to say, we usually stop at the elbow. <laughs> <laughs> but before we jump into the case of Carl Tanzler, let's go ahead and talk about our honorary brother of the week. Yeah. Woo. Woo. All right, so for those of you that don't know it, Honorary Brother of the Week, we pick an honorary brother, and it's always someone that either emailed us or sent us a tweet or left us a five-star review. They did some fucking cool shit. Yeah. So (laughs) if you want to be an honorary brother, then all you got to do is just leave us a five-star review on iTunes. Or pass us just a piece of paper with a note on it. We like that, too. Yes. (laughs) So here we go. This review is from Rania. Good friend, Rania. Okay. Nice. Whose name on iTunes is Ron John Jenkins. That's a pretty sweet <laughs> that's, name. That's all. That sounds like a basketball player. <laughs> it does. And he gives the ball to Ron John Jenkins. Yeah, dude. Like, and I the fl- Nets lose the game. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. Holy it had to be the Nets. Five stars. A hoot. Life with the brothers commonplace puts the facts face to face. They cover murders, ghosts, and ghouls. Sometimes making them look like fools. Ooh. That doesn't matter. It's more than chatter. Making you fear the pitter patter. Always enlightening. Your senses are heightening. Sounds oh, pretty shit. cool. That's yeah, like, fuck yeah. That very, was awesome. Very Dr. Seuss like, so, man. I liked it. Thank you, Rania. All righty, here we go. George Carl Tanzler, speaking <laughs> of the NBA. <laughs> Born February 8th, 1877. And now we're going to pause right here because there's a lot of stuff about this guy in the story where you see different information about him because he wrote an autobiography and also he says a lot of bullshit. Like I've seen another date that supposedly he was born on. So just a heads up there. Yeah. Born in Germany. He claimed to have nine university degrees. Mm. Also, I was going to say... uh we really don't know his date, but let's just say this guy found his date. <laughs> okay. <laughs> he claimed to have nine university degrees, to be a former submarine captain, and also an accomplished inventor. And I also heard claims that he said that he grew up in a castle. Nice. So I'm going to guess that the castle part's not true, as well as the nine university degrees. Maybe he had nine degrees uh, the fucking deodorant sticks, but <laughs> <laughs> or he just loved uh, the band ninety eight degrees. But um, the castle thing actually is true because um, oh. they got it wrong in the movie because it was a boy. But uh, he moved there with his dad to try to find his mom because she had died and he thought she was a ghost. This is just Casper. Oh, <laughs> See, oh I really didn't think it was going to get that far. Oh. Hey Tim. <laughs> Huh. Can I keep you? <laughs> oh my, that's so can creepy. I, I guess that was like the second verse. In the original script, he goes up to her and he says, can I finger you? <laughs> so and that's they, not even funny. They had to change it because I was the original actor and I said yes. <laughs> and I wasn't even in the movie <laughs> and you kept doing it to me. That's not even funny. Yeah, I guess in Casper, he was translucent and then he fingered me and that's why he's all white. <laughs> <laughs> And when Carl was young, he would have visions or a ghostly visitor, if you will. 
He believed it was a dead ancestor of his, Countess Anna Cantantia von Kassel, or mm. something like that. It's von Casper. He has it wrong. <laughs> he, he, was, he wasn't an ancestor either. Just a kid that was out playing his fucking sled, and he just didn't come in, and he died. So this guy just has it wrong. When he saw this chick, did they just, like, shape clay together? <laughs> <laughs> Ghost joke. I love it. But, uh, yeah, Countess Anna Cantantia von Kassel. She would come to him and told him that they were related and that he actually is a count. She also showed him the face of his true love, which was a dark-haired woman. So seeing this vi- vision when he was younger of the face of his true love, which was a dark-haired woman, mm. he believed that that really is his true love and he would spend his life trying to find her. Yeah, and she makes sense. She said like he's the count or something like that? Yeah, well she came to him and says she's the she's Countess Anna something okay. and that she's his ancestor which makes him a count, oh, which is oh, also nice. bullshit. Yeah. So well, when she was like talking, he's like your future girl is going to have black hairs on her head? A dark-haired woman, yes. Oh, yeah. Like, she, she also told him it was going to be the sexy pumpkin. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> Did, did how he, I met your mother? Yeah, yeah. Did he ask how many dark hairs are on her head? One, two, oh. three. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit, dude. And later, when Carl was in Australia, the ghostly vision of his true love would appear and hang out with him for a week, watching him working and sleeping. And after she vanished, Carl became determined to find the woman and be with her. And this part has some mixed reports. But some say he was in Australia because of being in the German military and being stationed over there. He was part of a submarine group, and Mm. that might have been why he was there. But then also some reports say that he was just over there studying weather patterns. Regardless of why he was there, he was said to have purchased boats, property, and even an island. Oh, wow. I I mean, I I don't buy all that, but... He bought the island because he knew Daniel was coming to beat his ass. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, so some of this information comes from writing that he did after everything. Mm. So that's why a lot of it, I'm guessing, is bullshit because he's retelling the stuff and saying all this stuff happened. Mm, Absolutely. So anyways, he ends up traveling and ended up in Australia for about 10 years. And while he was there, he was placed in a concentration camp for safekeeping because being German and during World War I, so they placed him in this camp. Yeah. And he was then moved to more of a castle-type prison called Trial Bay. And this upset Carl, so he made a plan. And much like Michael from Lost, mm. he was going to build a secret sailboat to get away in. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, I don't know how the fuck you can uh. you can like secretly build a sailboat while you're in a prison camp. I have no idea, but I fucking love it. Yeah, like, I don't that's know. awesome. It's adding a lot more to the Shawshank Redemption story, but <laughs> that too. I mean. He still was a he was able to get out, so I guess he could have built a fucking boat too. What's he fucking? What is he making it out of? Like, how does he hide it? I don't know. Imagine if the uh, I don't know. I just the bad news is, unfortunately, he never got to make his great escape because the war had ended and he would soon be free. Mm. But someone else did give reports that he was playing an escape with a count. Yeah, he started going by Count Carl, <laughs> Count Carl nice. Cohen or whatever his name is. Carl Tanzler. But yeah, he started going by that, and a guy gave a report saying that he was actually supposed to be making an escape with him. That name just sounds that name just sounds like a jobber wrestling name. I know, dude. Like somebody who just gets their ass kicked in like a second. <laughs> dude, uh he wasn't God damn it. He wasn't building a ship when he's in prison, but like from the Shawshank thing, they kind of borrow from it. So he'd like walk around the courtyard. And he'd fart in his pants and then like shake them loose and all like the the poop debris would like sh- come out. <laughs> but uh, he wasn't building a ship. He was building a shit. <laughs> so after the war, he returns home to Germany and learns that his father had died. His sister had moved to the United States, but he found out that his mother was at least safe. So he stayed there with her for a couple of years. And Carl would then get married in 1920 to an 18-year-old woman named Doris. Mm -hmm. And Carl was 43 at this time. So this isn't his dark-haired true love. Yeah. I don't know if he just couldn't find anyone that resembled her, which the only description I've seen is a dark-haired woman, which is like everyone. I'll say. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, so he married 18-year-old Doris, and he was 43. What was her hair color? Um, I don't know. Hmm. And Carl and his wife would also soon have two daughters. 
So good for Carl. Good job, Carl. Yeah, we'll find out what happens to that. Well, he has a, I know he has a neighbor he doesn't really care for. <laughs> oh, my God, Urkel. Yeah, that's <laughs> really all it was. Oh, fuck yeah, dude. In 1926, Carl decided he wanted to leave Germany and head out to the United States following his sister's footsteps. Wait, so he's like 50 at this point, right? Yeah, he got married at 43, okay. so yeah, yeah, he would have been uh, 49. Okay. And he first set sail out with his wife and children to Cuba, and then they end up moving to Florida. Wait, how old was he? He was 49 at this time. Oh, don't you think you mean uh, 49? <laughs> He's <laughs> okay, German. He is German. <laughs> okay. 49. Oh, God. All right, I like that. Yeah. And then in 1927, he abandons his family here nice. and gets a job as a radiology technician at the U.S. Marine Hospital in Key West, Florida. But right before that, he was actually a lemonade vendor. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hey there, Bobby. <laughs> and this is when he changes his name. So now he goes by Carl von Kossel or Count Carl von Kossel, I mean. Awesome. Count. So while he's working at this hospital as an x-ray technician, it was said that he wasn't very popular with his coworkers because he was very opinionated and egotistical and just really fucking weird, and he went by count. So yeah. if if I'm working with anyone and they're like, hey, call me count. Oh, yeah. That's... Like, yeah you can fucking count on me not calling <laughs> you that, you piece of shit. That is game over for any relationship I'm going to have with this person, for sure. <laughs> was he known for talking shit to... Uh... Golf players? <laughs> because you can count on me seeing <laughs> oh, you in the yes. parking lot. Holy <laughs> shit, dude. Uh, Happy Gilmore. And this is about when Carl's dreams would become reality. The vision of his true love would finally appear before him. But this time, it was no dream. This time, it was real. Ooh. As real as rain, Tim. Oh. <laughs> April 1930. The birth of April O'Neil. <laughs> <laughs> April 1930. Tansler first met his love in person. Was it April 1st, Tim? Uh, no, nah. because this actually happened. Yeah, this... <laughs> <laughs> so, Kev, who yes. was more sick, the girl or Carl? Ooh. I don't know. Let's find out. 21-year-old Cuban babe, tuberculosis patient, oh. Maria Elena Milagro de Hoyos. All and right. I can't hear the name Maria without thinking that fucking Santana Oh, song. yeah, that's, I, that's what I said before, yeah. Maria, Maria. Yeah. Hey, Kev, can you say your name one more time? Maria Alana Milagro de Hoyos. And I will avenge you for the death of my father. <laughs> <laughs> dude, it really is, dude. Holy shit. But yeah, we're going to call her Elena. Yeah, it's a lot easier. And as soon as she was wheeled into the hospital mm. and Carl had laid eyes on her, he knew it was the woman from his dreams and vision, a perfect match, and instantly the love was real, for him anyways. Yes, Cuban B. <laughs> so this poor or lucky girl, all she did was look like his vision yeah. that Carl had, and that was all it took. Which everything else that I've read sounds like a really fucking vague picture. Like the only description I've really seen is just a beautiful dark haired woman. Yeah, I mean that's pretty easy to find. But honestly, Kev, if you're not following your dreams, why the fuck are you even living at all? That's a good point. <laughs> I mean, I always get turned on when they wheel in Professor X, but I mean, that's that's just me. I mean, well, I guess why are you living at all? Kind of doesn't presume to this case in a couple weeks. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, well, it's not weeks, but <laughs> but what Carl didn't know because he couldn't know was that the beautiful dark-haired woman actually wouldn't even be born until 14 years after he had passed away, and her name was Natalie from the Facts of Life. Holy shit. I was like, what the fuck are you talking about? Moving on. <laughs> moving on. Elena's family had brought her into the hospital to have a scan done. She had poor health and a wicked bad cough at the time. Mm. And unfortunately, it turns out that she had tuberculosis. Was, she was in the wheel before, wheelchair before that? Or, or were they just Yeah, had, I don't actually know if they wheeled her in. I just said that. Oh. Uh, that they wheeled her in. Gotcha. Because she's pretty. Uh, she's dying and in bad condition at this point. Mm. And so they brought her in to get a check. And then that's when he saw her. Gotcha. Check, 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 check it out. <laughs> Check out my melody. <laughs> what, 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 what's your condition all about? Oh, I said, doctor, what's a condition? <laughs> <laughs> um, but even worse news is having tuberculosis in these days pretty much guaranteed that you're going to die. Oh, yeah. 
but Carl, no fucking way Carl was about to let his love die and leave him forever. This is Carl we're talking yeah, about. Yeah, he's not doing that after Sophia, man. It no. ain't happening. It's it ain't happening. It ain't happening, especially because he just got the company from Billy. <laughs> Fuck, dude. <laughs> that was one of the jokes I was preparing. <laughs> hey, Billy's going back to school, guys. <laughs> you son of a bitch. He's going to become a teacher. <laughs> but this is what happened. Is like he's not a fu- he's not a doctor. Yeah. He's um he's a an X-ray technician, which I did clinicals for. Hmm. And if I did something for a little bit, you know, he's not a fucking doctor. <laughs> I don't know jack shit about anything, you know. So, <laughs> and this is what he tells her. Wait a minute. I thought you were like still had medical expertise though. Yeah. How come every time you f- I fucking come to you when I prolapse, you always solve it? Uh. <laughs> you take the broom handle and just push it back in. Because <laughs> we're friends, dude. That's what friends do. <laughs> but yeah, Carl tells her like, "Yeah, you have tuberculosis, but don't you worry. We're going to find a way and we're going to cure you." Yeah. Which that's not a good thing to say, especially when you're not a fucking doctor and. I really doubt he's even qualified for radiology. Like he's he like said he had nine degrees. Yeah. So I really doubt he he does. When was this? Know. This is in like nineteen twenty nine, twenty nineteen thirty. Radiology existed back so, then. <laughs> hey, if this is like around that time, I mean it's Axe Man time almost. Yeah, dude. So, were, was she was he just gonna beat her with a yeah, fucking axe? That might have been the medicine. Yeah. Carl, he was determined. And he was going to save her. It's the love of his life. He's not going to just let her fucking die. Absolutely. So this is what he did. He would make and give to her elixirs, tonics, and special medicines. Like, I don't know how the fuck he'd even know what any of this is or how it would work. He's just, like, making shit up. Hmm. Sort of like an alchemy in Skyrim when you just throw on random ingredients like butterfly wings and saber cat tooth. (laughs) Will it work? I don't fucking know. Neither do you, Carl. I was really about to crack like a video game joke because that's exactly what that sounded like. Like knowing how like weird and like completely perverted this guy is, do you think he like busted in one of them? Just like, all right, you know, fuck (laughs) it. If it's going to work, it's going to work. Wait, what do you mean? He's not perverted. Well, they documented that he did do that. We haven't gotten to anything yet, too. When, He's just an old man, an older gentleman who fell in love with this woman. When he busted right. a nut in the in the potion, though, like he just busted, <laughs> he busted a fucking great nut in it, <laughs> and like as soon as he did it, like just smoke, like like just started flying up, and he just knew this was the one he was looking for, and he just looked down and he yelled, "Mailman!" <laughs> <laughs> Well, no, he's uh, just, he's an older gentleman who's trying to save this beautiful girl's life. It's romantic. It's, I'm, this is like an old German remedy. That's why I was saying it. It's, oh, it's a very good, uh, I can't <laughs> do German. That was yeah. all you guys get. Wait. <laughs> Dude, that Magic was one Kingdom? of your D&D. Oh, shit. That is one of my <laughs> D&D voices. <laughs> was, by the way, I think, yeah. I'm, I think I'm out of Carl jokes. I don't <laughs> Elena, think I have drink this. It's Uh-oh. just a fucking D&L you ripped the label <laughs> off of. I can still see <laughs> half of it. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, so he started making her, like, all these elixirs and potions and shit. And next, Carl would show up at the home of Elena's family with a bunch of medical equipment that the hospital let him borrow. Mm -hmm. This is a military hospital, and they let him borrow, like, all this heavy, giant, heavy, expensive x-ray machines and all this other shit. And some sources say that he borrowed it without permission, but I don't know how he would get all this shit there without them knowing. Wait, I thought he borrowed it from, like, the Arroyo's home, or the fuck their name was. He brought it all to their home. Oh, to okay. To Elena's family. All right. All right. Yeah, so because it's... Uh, yeah, he just starts bringing all this shit and loading it in their house. And then he just starts fucking zapping her with, like, radiation and x-rays and shit. Oh, like, yeah, that's, that's not... Gonna, that's, that's gonna work. <laughs> that's not good. Yeah. And that's what he's doing. He's just fucking yeah. zapping the fuck out of yeah, her. Yeah, we know that doesn't cause any diseases. Hey, y'all been zapped. <laughs> <The> Chappelle show. <laughs> <laughs> and, like, she would be in so much pain from it all. Because she yeah. already has tuberculosis and she's fucking dying. Yeah. But he would, like, bribe her with gifts, and he'd be like, please, I'm trying to save your life. She's like, I can't. I can't go on anymore. It hurts too much. Mm. He says, please, let me continue. (laughs) I'll give you this Ace of Base CD. Oh, my God. (laughs) She says, okay, go on. And right when he's about to, like, hit her with the x-ray machines, it makes the noises. It goes, (laughs) ba-da-da-da-da-da-da. Oh, that she won't see is another baby. She don't smile. And I wish I wouldn't have made that joke because I just remember something that comes up. So I do oh, apologize for yes. that joke. Well, I'm I'm gonna throw this one out there though because when he was giving her like all the gifts and stuff, like 
Like he just wasn't helping, and he's like, you know what? I'm just gonna, you know, you know laughter is the best medicine. <laughs> so he was just showing her a lot of gifs. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> hey, uh. She's like, and she's like, oh. she's like, please no more. It, don't make it. Carl. You're so fucking funny, but please don't make me laugh. It hurts to laugh. And he's like, oh, don't worry. This will not make you laugh. And he hands her chairman of the board on DVD. <laughs> <laughs> He figured he wanted to try opposite of laughing. <laughs> Carl was like, here, let me put on this VHS of Deck the Halls I have from you. It's starring Matthew Broderick. And she's like, please stop. I'm already in so much pain as it is. <laughs> <laughs> and during this entire time, he's writing her letters. He's giving her gifts and telling her how he's going to save her and all that. And he's always like, oh, I, I want you to marry me. And sh- he asks her to marry him all the time. But she always tells him no. And it was obvious to her family that she didn't feel the same about him. Yeah. And plus, she had already been married not too long ago. And after having a miscarriage, her husband left her. Oh, Jesus Christ. Yeah, so sorry about that Ace of Base joke. Oh, I didn't even think about that. Yeah. It's in bad taste now. Yeah, he didn't mean to do it. Also, he's buying her, like, all this shit. He bought her a new bed, a bunch of jewelry, and he's always buying her, like, silk dresses and shit. Hey, it works for our man Mel Hall. Oh, (laughs) Yeah, it did. <laughs> and and this poor girl, she's getting told by this 50-year-old guy that he had a miracle cure for her and that he's saving her life. Dude, this is Mel Hall. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like saying like he's going to save her life and everything. And of course, you're dying. You're you're only 20 years old. You're dying. You probably would have no choice but just to hope that he's he can do it, you know? And I don't know if this part is factual or not, but I heard that since he was writing letters to her, they would write letters back and forth. And in the letters he would write, he would always tell her that he loved her. And he'd be like, love always, count, Carl, things like that. Yeah. And she would write letters back and she would sign off with, from your friend, Elena Horos. Oh, nice. Dude. So if that's Holy true, the, your friend part obviously means that she didn't feel the same about him. That is straight up the equivalent of her texting K. So maybe she likes him, but not like liked him, as they would say in Hey Arnold. Lila, that bitch. <laughs> maybe they, uh, maybe in their letters they just played like that like weird math game together, and she just called him <laughs> Count Sudoku. <laughs> <laughs> Shit, that was good. So this is going on for like a year. So this is going on for like a year. He's... Uh, zapping her with fucking x-ray shit trying to save her giving her like all these bullshit things i don't Mm. know if he honestly believes like i really do think he believes he can save her yeah um at this point every time you keep saying zapping i just keep picturing like the 1960s adam west batman like zap i swear to god i kept thinking of lord raiden like so many times and i also heard that the family tried moving away because he was always bothering them with like his obsession to cure her and then he eventually tracked down someone that knew them and made them tell him that where where they were oh living. God, and Jesus. then he just did the same shit over there, like brought all the stuff over there and was trying to save her and stuff again. This fucking this is Mel Hall. Well, if they're like the reason we left is we're OK with her dying. Yeah. At this point, he's pretty much killing her even more. Oh, yeah. I mean, that doesn't help. Like, that's not good. All this shit he's doing. Mm. And unfortunately, and to the surprise of nobody. Carl was unable to save Elena, and on October 25th, 1931, she passed away. And Carl was grief-stricken and heartbroken. He finally found his true love, but just like that, he had lost her. Mm. Carl wanted to help out still, though, so he paid for a funeral, and he was also going to pay for a gravesite in stone. However, he was worried about the drainage and fearing that the grave was in a location where floods would damage it. So he decided it was best to construct a very expensive above-ground mausoleum for her place of rest. Hmm. It's almost kind of a mystery how this guy did have so much money, though. Is he almost Tommy Wiseau? Dude, I, I really I knew that's where you were going. I almost said it. But I mean, like medical field and military yeah. stuff. And if he does do inventions, I mean, they have pictures of his labs mm. he's had, and I don't know, but he, he spends all of his money. Also, I mean, this <sighs> is this is just... Kind of a dark question, but do you think that the parents just may have just gone in a room and been like, hey, this guy won't leave us alone? Mm-hmm. And, so and it's it's happening anyway. Like, we have, like, extra pillows. Uh, <laughs> can we just, you know, just, just you know, speed it up a little <laughs> bit? <laughs> you know but what like, I mean? <laughs> I don't think the dad actually knew. It's going to be the sixth sense joke. <laughs> oh. 
It was just gonna be you were keeping her sick. <laughs> hey, well, forget about it. Okay, he doesn't say that. But. All right, hey Kev, I got a question. What were you doing? How could you? You killed her. You were keeping her sick. <laughs> eh, forget about it. <laughs> <laughs> so, Kev. <laughs> So, Kev, you mentioned that this guy had, like, a bunch of labs and stuff? Well, he had, like, his own laboratory and shit. So who had more labs, this guy or Whitney, Wisconsin? Oh, <laughs> holy shit, dude. Oh, fuck yeah. So things are already a little bit weird with this guy. Some people find him to be like, oh, this is a great story of romance and love, and some think that he's, like, creepy and weird. Yeah. At this point, he also has the Undertaker take some special okay. <laughs> one on one with the Undertaker <laughs> in a tag team match, player. I don't one know on if, one with the Undertaker. I don't know if it was a match against the Undertaker because there definitely would have been a casket into oh, the ground for that oh, one. Oh, yeah, there would have been. Uh, so Carl had the Undertaker take some. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so Carl. After uh, setting up um, a brother versus brother match of Undertaker oh, versus Kane, fuck yeah. Um, so Carl had an un- had <laughs> Carl had the Undertaker. <laughs> it's awesome. You can't do it, dude. It's not possible. Okay, I'm gonna get through this. Can you say play at the end of it? <laughs> so Carl had the Undertaker take some special measures with the body. He had an incubator made or bought. Mm. And this was also, he could try to preserve her better. And he also had her old, like, rotten clothes taken off her and had new clothes put on. And then he had, like, sprayed the body with perfume. Yeah. Because she's been dead for, I think, like, a few weeks now. So did she, Elena, die at age 21? Yeah. So does that mean involving The Undertaker that Mm. Carl was the one in 21 in one? (laughs) Oh, my God. It wasn't, Brock. (laughs) So, yeah, he gets his incubator made for her to try and preserve her body. Yeah. He then puts her body into the incubator and has some sort of chemicals or solution put into the tank with her. And doing all this was to stop her from decaying or decomposing. Did, I don't uh, know how we would know if any of this shit would work or not, I, but, yeah. did but he, when, you're, when you're in love, you're determined, Tim. Absolutely. Did he also have, like, a rose and a glass <laughs> jar that kept her alive? Oh, my <laughs> oh dude, oh, shit. That, <laughs> That Beauty and the Beast? Uh, no, Mr. Freeze from uh, the Batman. Oh, fuck. Okay. It does really remind me of that, except Mr. Freeze's wife is actually still alive, right? Isn't she just... Yeah, 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 it was keep, yeah, it was keeping her alive. And just one small minor note here. Carl was also the only one that had a key to get into the mausoleum. Hmm. You can see pictures of the mausoleum. Also, he had a phone installed on the outside of it, so he could like talk into... The mausoleum tour. So that's Dude. pretty. That's cute. That's I, romantic, and that's cute. I've been trying so hard to just crack a Fallout Boy joke, and I, I, I <laughs> dude, I, I yeah. had it in here and I deleted it. Yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know how to do it. During this time, Carl started renting a room for him to live in. The room was in Elena's family's house, and as you might be able to guess, it in her old bedroom. So that is super fucking creepy and yeah. weird. The- or, or. Very romantic, possibly. Well, it gets worse when like he just talks the parents out of you know living in their room, and he makes them move <laughs> to the other room, and he sleeps in there because he's fucking Mel Hall. Mel Hall, baby. But but yeah, so he moves into her old room, which I imagine it's just exactly the way she left it. You, oh, I mean, yeah, you would think that's fucking weird. Because I mean, she was so sick, you know, towards the end, she probably couldn't really done anything. So like her, all of her shits in there, probably like her clothes and everything. So he's probably just smelling it. Oh, yeah. He's in there sm- <laughs> smelling panties. That's gross. He, he is. He, uh, and he, back then, they weren't cleaning those panties <laughs> either. <laughs> yeah, Mel Hall was around. <laughs> oh. So uh, he must have got letters it's like, Daddy, when are you coming home? He's like, ah, sorry, I can't. Got to jack off in this dead girl's room for a couple weeks. Oh, oh geez. God. He was. We all know it. Like, the family is super fucking poor. So I, I get, like, you want to, like, you have a chance to get some money. But come on. Like, you don't, don't do this. Like, even yeah. if you, like, I can understand, like, all right, he he tried saving her life, but you can't let him live in her old room. That's fucking weird. And like, Especially when you know he was in love. I, I don't know. It's just really weird. Yeah, it seemed like he was already pretty weird about it. I'm the type that would take advantage of him. Because, like, if I was poor and I knew this guy was a 100%, like, lovesick creep, I'd be like, we have a pair of used panties. That's- like, 10 grand. <laughs> Do it. 
Why not? Right? <laughs> Two. <laughs> then, then they, I would. Then they just give him one of the dad's underwear. Oh, oh. He's like, "Are you sure this was hers? It's got a, it's got a hole in the front, like the, di- it's got the dick hole." <laughs> he puts it on his head and starts. Uh, he d- trying to do some weird science stuff to her. <laughs> they're like, they're like, uh, "Are you sure this is hers? Because uh, it's got the dick hole." And the parents are like, "Well, did you ever see her naked?" <laughs> oh, come on, guys. So for the next year and a half. Carl would be seen visiting the grave site, the mausoleum, every night. He would come and bring gifts with him sometimes as well. And he would, like, talk through the phone to her, and he would, like, sing to her and stuff. Damn it, that was so perfect for laying the grass next to the Uh mausoleum. What uh, what song is he singing? Laying the grass next to the mausoleum. What's yours? Um... I'll do mine. I'll Let's leave. get back, back, back to the disaster. Oh, yes. yes. My heart's beating faster. <laughs> Dude, every. And not be your memory. <laughs> Dude, every emo kid in early 2000s is fucking creaming their jeans right now. <laughs> oh, they're about to. What's he, yours, too? Because he picks up the tin can, puts it up to his lips, and he says. Hello there, the angel from my nightmare. Oh, fuck yes, dude. On a serious Blink. note, though, I don't know why, but this thing about him like singing to her, the song that honestly does pop in my head is that BG song that, I know your eyes in the dude. morning sun, <laughs> yeah. and I feel you touch me <laughs> in the pouring rain. Dude, that's kind of creepy if that's what it was. And Carl, he even stated that he could feel her hands on his face. And when he later took a picture outside the mausoleum, there was a white figure captured in the image. Yeah, by taking was a it picture. Was it her spirit? By taking a picture, then he just fucking drew it. Is that <laughs> why there was reports of people seeing him do the Mel Hall when he was talking into the can? <laughs> <laughs> but it was said that he would sing to her her favorite Spanish song, which I forget what it's called. Mm. Maria Maria. Maria Maria Dude What if he went out there With like an electric guitar And he started playing that riff (laughs) He plays the one with uh, Carlos Santana And fucking Matchbox 20 Oh Cause you're so smooth (laughs) They think that he's singing to her But he's actually just drinking A fucking Pepsi (laughs) (laughs) Oh sorry What were we saying to Uh no, I think the Spanish song he was singing to was Despacito. <laughs> Billy, not a man, a Dude, I fucking hate that song so much. Oh, yeah. After a little bit of, of time had gone by, he's going there every night. <laughs> she started to speak back to him. She huh. started telling him something, asking him for a simple request, just mm-hmm. a little request. Yeah. Take my body from my grave. Oh, yeah, that definitely happened. The spirit would express her love for him and tell Carl she wanted to go home with him. And that's exactly what Carl was going to do. So in April of 1933, what just so happens to be right around the time that Carl lost his job for unknown reasons. Oh, yeah, definitely. Carl decided to set his plan in motion. You might as well do it when you're unemployed. I got a question about the mausoleum. Yeah. So he can see her body. Why on the back side of it did he install an eye hole at waist level? (laughs) (laughs) I never really understood that part. (laughs) What would be the... (laughs) What would be the point of that? <laughs> I don't know either, man. I thought it was so weird. <laughs> like, there would be nothing in there. Like, <laughs> he's just like fucking air. Wait. No, it's an eye hole. <laughs> so he can look in there. <laughs> we don't know how small it is, too. Uh, my heart is beating fast. My underwear is wet, and we dance. <laughs> oh, yes. oh, yeah. The only problem was the cemetery was surrounded with houses and buildings, mm. so the spirit of Elena had told him to wait until there was a new moon mm. and then to take her body out of the cemetery. And this is, is the inspiration for the song Last Dance with Mary Jane. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Doesn't he fucking dance with a dead body in that one, in the video? Pretty she, sure he does. She's like, uh, in order for you not to get caught, I need you to wait until new moon. In order to take my body away. Holy shit. Oh, yes. That's a Twilight New Moon. It's going to be a great movie. Everyone will be at the theater seeing it. She's like, yes, they will all be at the theater seeing it. That way you can sneak me away with no one being able to catch you. I was going to go see New Moon. (laughs) So the big night came. The New Moon. Carl put on his suit and hat. Hmm. Long as that. Never mind. 
and brought. No, 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 no. no I heard, I heard where you're going. <laughs> where was the heading? I, I liked it. It was gonna be that suit and tie song by Justin Come Timberlake. On. I don't even I'll know. As long as I got, got my suit and tie, tie. long as I got <laughs> my wheelbarrow, I'm gonna take you home with the moon. Close, oh, oh, dude. Shit. That's fucking close. No, that's nice. So Carl put on his suit and tie and hat. And with him, he brought a fucking radio flyer wagon to load her body onto. Nice. Dude, was the hat a fedora? I don't know. <laughs> Probably. Dude. Holy shit, that reminded me. And I, fuck, I can't think of what they're called. You're going to know as soon as I say it, and I'm just going to be pissed that I don't remember. What were the shoes that fucking the jet put on? The PF flyers. God damn it. Okay. I could not remember what they were called. Yeah, Sandlot. The fucking jet, man. Now, you may think that somebody could just look into the mausoleum and see that, like, the coffin was missing because there was, like, a window in there. Yeah. However, he had the coffin made to his specifications, which included two layers, like, two shells. Mm. So the body was in, the, like, the inside shell, then that was in the outer one. He took the, her body out with the inside shell and then left the outer shell so that no one would be able to tell that she was missing. Hashtag genius. Or hashtag wild man. Oh, I would say wild man. I would say wild man. Because if I'm asking about shells, I'm at fucking Taco Bell, man. So <laughs> that's just or how in it the goes. fucking macaroni aisle. Yeah, either way. So Carl, he loaded the casket onto the wagon. I, he didn't just put like the dead body on there. He put the casket on top and he started rolling away. And I also heard that while he was rolling the casket out, that the casket fell off the wagon and kind of onto him, and all like the solution and the fucking corpse juice like went all over him. I, That's I, fucking disgusting. At this point, I kind of feel like he would like that. Though. I know he's like, oh, he's like pretending to hit rocks and yeah. cracks in the sidewalk. Yeah. At this <laughs> point, like, Oops. as it's happening, he's rubbing his hands together. It's like my plan's going perfectly. <laughs> he like when he gets home, he looks like Ace Ventura after he just got out of that Shark Tank. So like, <laughs> here's so like, he does the pocket thing where he hits the pocket and the fucking corpse <laughs> juice flies out. That's he, disgusting. Videos, I just want to know how much time I have. <laughs> One for the wagons, Joker's oh. Night, or something like that. Yeah, fuck yeah, dude. That's his song he sings? <laughs> well, since Carl couldn't just take the coffin on the wagon, like, all the way back to his house, he recently decided to rent out a nearby house. That way he could take the body there first, then he could sneak it away to a different location. So yeah. he rents a house that's right by the cemetery to do this. After he gets the body into that house... He puts the body into some sort of box or case or something and then calls a taxi to help him get it to his place. So the taxi guy even, like, helped him load this box in there. So yeah. I don't know if he, like, absolutely had no idea or if it was just, like, the end of his shift. <laughs> <laughs> the fucking get it. I got this. I got it. I got he, it myself. He lives in my house. Oh, my God. Jump on the box. I got you, too. It's from Scary Movie 2. I can yeah. do it myself. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So the corpse, even though Carl took like all the precautions that he could, like trying to preserve it and everything, mm. she's been dead for about two years yeah, at this it's, point. It's not preserved at all. He had originally taken her body to his makeshift laboratory, which mm. was just an old airplane that he had turned into a place to work in. Okay, that's kind of. It had no wings, but it had like the body of it. There's pictures of it. It's fucking badass. Yeah. Uh, so well, did- and he called it Elena's airship. He's slowly becoming my favorite supervillain. <laughs> I was going to say, it didn't have wings because that show doesn't come out for a while. <laughs> <laughs> but he would soon have to move the plane and uh, take her back to his house. But yeah, for a while, he was working on her in the fucking plane lab. That's pretty right. pretty can, awesome. Can we imagine when he had to give up the whole plane thing and take her back to his house? Can we imagine that like he was like pretending that like he had a drink and he was buying her one? <laughs> I was like, hey baby, you want to go back to my house? <laughs> he knocks on the he knocks on the door of the plane before he goes in there. He knocks, sticks his head in. He's like, hello, I'm looking for a plane, Jane. <laughs> That's not <laughs> funny. He has his uh, dick out. Now <laughs> <laughs> tooth got me, man. Oh, um, he has her handcuffed to the plane. Oh, and God. he kind of like shakes it a little bit and her arm rips off and it's still handcuffed to it. <laughs> Connor, <laughs> Connor, <laughs> Dude, I love it. I if love they it. knew the truth, they'd call him Carl 300. <laughs> <laughs> so the corpse, she has been dead for two years now. Her clothes are all moldy and nasty. She's covered in maggots. Her eyes, nose, and ears are all gone. Oh, She's God. in pretty rough shape despite all of his efforts. 
Her abdominal cavity was completely collapsed in, and her skeletal structure was all fucked up. But Carl, he's a visionary, he's a romantic man, he's an inventor, he's a hero. He's pretty much the German Captain America in my eyes. Oh <laughs> my god, yeah, first Avenger. Um, so he reset the bones, he connected them with wire and coat hangers. He stuffed the abdomen with rags to, fo- to form and hold its shape. I'm guessing he probably did that thing where you take like old T-shirts like that you don't use anymore. You turn those into rags and yeah. you use those to stuff her. So she probably has like a mm-hmm. couple Bugle Boy and Bum <laughs> Equipment T-shirts. No up fear, in there. too. No fear. No fear. Hey, uh, and Big Dog. Oh yeah. What kind of rags were they? <laughs> he's come rags. He's, oh, yeah. He is a gentleman and a romantic, just sweetheart. He doesn't and, do that. Right. And the good thing is to put her together. He only spent like three dollars at Dollar Tree. So, <laughs> so Carl also he purchases two glass eyes and stuck them into the maggot coated eye holes. So he puts the little glass eyeballs in there. We've all been there. And uh, and since she had no hair left. Carl had made a wig for her mm. that was made out of Elena's very own hair that her mother had kept after her funeral. So that's a little bit weird. Wait, so did they fucking cut her hair? Like, did they just, oh, you want I this? I'm, I don't know. Were there Indians yeah. around? Oh, oh, oh yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah. Uh, I don't know because, like, all the, like, the radiation and shit, oh, if good, their though. hair is falling out. I don't know why they had well, this hair. Well, if it hair. wasn't, it was fucking his fault. So... <laughs> And he then coated her skin with sheets of silk, plaster, and also wax. And she was becoming very real to him. I bet. And then Carl, he got into the coffin with her, Mm. laid beside her, and gave her a very nice romantic and seductive kiss on those sweet, sweet corpse lips. Oh, man. That is fucking disgusting. She's a a two-year-old dead corpse. Dude, my only hope is none of our listeners are eating Chipotle right now. Oh, yeah. Especially not with extra rice. <laughs> Especially not, man. It reminds me of that scene in The Lost Boys. They're maggots. Where he's eating the fucking Chinese food. <laughs> yeah. Got the fucking guy from 24. <laughs> Where's the bomb? <laughs> <laughs> fucking Kiefer Sutherland. Oh, my God. <laughs> Where's the fucking bomb? The little ring that uh, I, can't, I can't do, but it's hilarious. She's becoming very real to him, and he's... Showing his love and affection, giving her a sweet, just a sweet kiss on the lips. Nothing mm. wrong with that. No, it's romantic. Yeah, and he has an autobiography where there, where he writes about all this stuff and he gives his feelings on, on those events. I bet. Is it okay if I read a a poem that he wrote from his autobiography in there? Oh, you got a poem from his autobiography? You want to read, Jeremiah? <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah, go ahead and read it. When I met her, it was January, middle of winter. <laughs> oh I was alone up in my attic where nobody can hear. Her. It was just a cold gust of wind, and I felt somebody pass through me. When I opened up my eyes, my only love appeared to me. Long hair, and she was bald in spots, and her skin was just as soft as a parking lot. It was love at first sight. I'll never see her again. And to this day, I'm in the attic waiting on my girlfriend. Holy shit. That strangely Uh. fits. Carl, he wasn't done yet, though. It <laughs> it took a lot of work to get her back looking like her sexy Cuban self. Oh, yeah. He had a what? nose made for her somehow. I don't really know how. I think he used... Bubble gum? <laughs> no, he used like yeah. some sort of w- like sculpting wax type stuff. I don't, know, I, I don't know. What I read, and I couldn't like figure out who he was talking about, I heard he got it from like some pop star who didn't need his anymore. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, so he had that nose made for her, but she also had some rigor mortis going on because she had one of her arms bent over. Her. So yeah. he had to try and like get her her shape back he had to try and bend her arms back so he set up some sort of rope and pulley system much like that training scene in blood sport i'm guessing <laughs> remember <laughs> where he's got those two tre- these two trees then it has ropes connected to each arm and he <laughs> what's the fucking okay I love Bloodsport. I oh, love Van Dam. Yeah, that's a great. Well, what movie. the fuck is the point of that? Like, I get it, like you're stretching, but there's you. That's there's no yeah. way that can help. <laughs> also, also, also could, do we say that we love Van Dam? If it like, do we love anything else from Van Dam? Universal yeah. Soldier was sweet. Um, blood, uh, kickboxer, Street Fighter. Okay, not street, <laughs> not Street Dude, Fighter. I'm going to kick the son of a bitch <laughs> Bison. So, or what's that? I'm going to stick my boot. I don't know, but it's fucking yeah. awesome. And then Carl, he also had her dressed Wait. in a very nice white dress. In Bloodsport, the scene you were in? 
Well, you interrupted that for this, so I got to do that over. Fuck yeah, dude. I loved it. Yeah. <laughs> and Carl also had her dressed in a very nice white dress, and he finally had his bride. Dude, you got you guys have seen the fucking video for her last dance, Mary Jane, right? Yeah. Okay, because this is oh, it. Yeah. No, this I is haven't. it. Yeah, it, he dances with like a dead girl in a white dress. I'm pretty sure it's white dress. I left out this one part. I don't believe it's true at all, but I saw it on some sources. I think I only saw it on one source. Mm. But supposedly the night before Carl like brought her body back to his place, mm. that he called and told one of his friends that Elena had finally agreed to marry him. Mm. I don't buy that at all because like I don't know why he would admit to that because I, that would just be him admitting that like he's taking her body pretty much yeah, and I honestly just don't think he has a friend to tell this to. Well, like they knew she was dead and stuff and like I actually that was true um because like one of his buddies like he called him and so he called another one of his buddies and they came up with this plan to get some, the, came up with this plan to, to get some money. <laughs> so they called him. They're like, all right, if this is true, we challenge you to two on two in basketball. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> wow, that didn't yeah. go the way. I thought it was going to end with her walking out of the ocean with a fucking treasure chest and an arrow through her head. <laughs> Holy shit. Oh wait, what is that? Like, Weekend at Bernie's, oh, the oh second one. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I've never, I've never yeah. seen the second one. So did he call, like, like I know... His group and like their kind of people like to stick together. So did he call his buddy Chocula? <laughs> <laughs> Shut up! <laughs> All the counts. Uh, uh. So for the next seven years, yeah, seven what? years. Oh my god! He keeps her at his home in his bed, so he's like going to sleep with her. And whenever the smell is too bad, because this is a fucking nine-year rotting corpse, he sprays and coats her with perfume. And he also spends a lot of time trying to preserve her body best he can. And he even has, like, death masks made of her, like, multiple times. Like, as years go by, he'll take a death mask. And that's where you get, make, like, a, a like a cover of their like, face. Yeah, like much. a mold. Or because, yeah, yeah cuz her face also is covered with like one of those. It's pretty much a mask covering cuz yeah. it's all like rotten. Yeah, how and, dare her, you know, do the <laughs> thing that dead people do. So Kev, <laughs> he's fu- you know what though? You got to respect it. He's per- he's persistent. He's persistent. He's yeah. he loves her. He's trying to keep the memory of his love alive and keep her Isn't he like <laughs> fucking 70 at this point? <laughs> He'd be close to 60. Oh, okay. And if wait, you haven't seen the pictures yet, look them up. It's creepy as fuck. Oh, wait. There's fucking She's, pictures. Dude, there's a lot of pictures. She's scary looking. Okay, I just got to show you it real quick. Holy shit. It's scary as shit. It's so fucking scary. I can't imagine waking up in the middle of the night and just fucking seeing this. Yeah, fuck it that, is fucking... Dude. I'm looking at the picture. It is horrifying. Jesus, man. Just, oh, there's there's more pictures than just I, that one. Just let her... Just just put her back, man. I don't know why I did it in the first place, but just put her back. You sick fuck. Yeah, there's some. Okay. That's terrifying. Moving on. He did put her back into some wire so he can put her together. <laughs> and during the next seven years, though, people started to get very suspicious. I wonder the, why. The main thing, which is kind of funny, the main thing that made them suspicious was that, okay, there's this weird old dude who was going to that mausoleum every night for almost two years. And then all of a sudden, he just stopped going altogether. So they're like, okay, that's kind of weird. That weird old dude's not out there on the phone to the mausoleum. He's not singing or talking to her. Mm. He did it every day for two years. Yeah. So people are like, what the fuck happened? Yeah. They probably just thought he died, but yeah. <laughs> and also, it was very weird that that same weird old guy had been buying a lot of jewelry, gifts, silk dresses, perfumes, and other female items. So that's awfully strange seeing as... He's just a lonely old man. Why would he be buying all this shit? Oh my god, other female items just <laughs> kind of gross me out. I I don't I don't even know why. <laughs> Jesus. And talk around town was that Carl had actually stolen the body and was living with it. So a lot of people are already saying that. Wait, shit. holy shit! They just came up with that. Yeah. Wow. Some people claim that they looked in his window after he left and they saw that body in his bed. <laughs> Bunch of fucking peeping toms. <laughs> yeah, they're the fucking those How perverts. Fucking dare those guys? I need those those fucking pervs better you know, you stay know, out. I of will his testify windows. for him. <laughs> Come to my window, <laughs> crawl inside and sleep <laughs> with the corpse in my bed. Oh yeah. Um, there was also a word around town that besides his penis, there was actually another stiffy in his house. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, shit, dude. Some people would even say 
they would claim that sometimes they would see him dancing in the window, <gasps> holding her upright Dude, and hold dancing with her. It is fucking. But it is they that didn't song. know if like they were just like, yeah, why is he dancing with like a fucking weird doll? Yeah. So that's fucking creepy. Sometimes they like would look through the window and they'd see her leg in the window, but they realized they were just watching a Christmas story. <laughs> oh, <laughs> fuck come on, dude. So he said, like, "Okay, let's uh, <laughs> let's take it from the top. A uh, one, two, three, one, two, three. <laughs> Tom, why you punish me? I don't know why that would be the song they'd be singing to. Like, how could you dance to that song? I wait. How could you not dance? And to that I song? don't believe it. Time is wasted. <laughs> Holy shit. And I saw this one in w- only in one source, one spot. Did I see this part? Yeah. And it's there's no fucking way. But they're like, yeah. And one time he took her out on a boat ride. How the fuck did he get her out onto a boat and I back? Mean, this wasn't me, but I'm taking credit for that source. <laughs> wait, I, I, I put that out. He's like. That fucking Daniel Radcliffe movie where he's like the oh, Swiss Army Swiss knife. Army, he's yeah. doing that with her in the water. <laughs> <laughs> she rips that fart. <laughs> uh. <laughs> and during this time, Elena's sister thought something very weird was going on. Mm. So she asked Carl many times, like, yeah, you're the only one with a key. Could you unlock the mausoleum just so we can see her body just to make sure that yeah. she's in there? <laughs> Seven but, years later. But he told her no. He told her no mm. and told her no again. So she was growing frustrated, and then Carl finally s- decided to invite her over to his home and told her, I have something to show you. Uh, I, uh. So her sister goes over to Carl's house, heads inside, finds Carl standing in there with his hand on a curtain, and then he pulls it back to reveal the body of Elena laying in his bed. Holy shit, is that fucking scary. Wait, Hash, hashtag wild man. Oh, hashtag wild man. <laughs> but how did he? How? Uh, I'll let you keep finish. I'll let you keep going. So she, of course, is terrified, scared, confused, disgusted. Mm. She briefly convinced herself that no, this is just like a wax sculpture or something that he made of her, because that's easier for her to comprehend and deal with. And for all of us, yeah. But uh, but within a couple of days, just to be sure, she had called the authorities, and then the cops showed up at Carl's and arrested him. And they took the body to be uh, to be looked at and examined, and it turns out that it was indeed the corpse of Maria Elena Hoyos, which at this time she's been dead for almost a decade. Jesus Christ. Carl is arrested and eventually went on trial, and during this time his story is getting out and he's becoming like really popular. Mm. And so during the trial, Carl, he admits to taking the body and trying to preserve it. And he was saying that he was almost close to bringing her back. Yeah. Like he believed that one time in bed, like while laying there, he felt her hand move. <laughs> and this is where a lot of people start to find the story to be actually romantic. Like he mm-hmm. wanted his true love to be brought back to life. He loved her so much that he mm-hmm. couldn't just let her die yeah. and, and forget about her. And this is what he tells the courtroom. This may never start. She could fall apart. And I'd be her memory. Oh, so yes. get back, yeah. back, back, back to, to where we last. <laughs> I'm <laughs> Holy sorry. Shit, dude. No, he didn't say that at all. A lot of people are taking his side, though. Like, a lot of people, like, feel for him. Yeah. But the thing is, is there's zero evidence that she felt the same for him. And honestly, it more points towards her not feeling the same at all. But he wanted to bring her back. And he even tells the court what his foolproof plan was. Yeah. So this was his plan. This is how he explained his actions of what he was doing. Mm. He was going to use an airship to take himself and Elena's body, quote, high into the stratosphere so that radiation from outer space could penetrate Elena's tissues and restore life to her somnolent form. I don't know how to if that's a word. Somnolent form. Yeah. Which that makes perfect sense. Yeah, totally. Like, he wasn't able to do it so that's why he took her to his home to keep their love alive as long as he could. Like, yeah. I completely understand. Heart melted. Yeah. I get that. Yeah, space was going to do it for him. <laughs> or just time. Yeah. <laughs> space and time. That's a fucking nutty. That is so yeah. fucking nutty. That's and, that's, that's it, his plan. And also, like, a crack in his argument that they probably should have used in court is, uh, hey, how's your wife and kids doing? Oh, yeah. Just, also, what I didn't mention is during this time, one of his daughters died. Yeah. He don't even do anything Yeah, he about forgot it. about her. Yeah. yeah, he couldn't forget about the girl that didn't like yeah. him. But yeah, he totally forgot about his kids and his wife. I thought his foolproof plan was to get into uh, like an airplane or a, you said airship? 
Yeah, an airship. I thought it was airplane. like an airship, and then I thought it was gonna be flying around the world <laughs> really, really fast in reverse. This Superman. Is Superman. Yeah. yeah, that's what I figured it was. Yeah. And then, like we said, there is a picture of the plane called Elena's airship. It's badass. But mm. here's the thing: I don't get. Like, say that would have worked. Her body has no organs. It has no eyes yeah. or anything. Yeah, at this point. So if she did come back to life, that would be the dead. fucking scariest yeah. thing in the entire oh, yeah. world. That'd be something you couldn't kill. It'd be like that, or you could actually it'd be like that skeleton from Scary Movie too. <laughs> <It'd pretty much laughs> like, keep pulling it apart. It pretty much would just be like fucking Lindsay Lohan right now. <laughs> Wait, is she not dead? <laughs> She's still going. Oh, okay. Cocaine's a hell of a drug. <laughs> At least though, after hearing his story and his defense. Mm. The people did the right thing in regards to Carl. Yeah. And by the right thing, I mean that all the charges against him were dropped oh my because God. Oh my God. 10 years, the statute of limitation had run out. Oh, my and God. And obviously, he couldn't be held accountable for a crime like that, which was so long ago. He was still doing it. And plus, though, they didn't fully know what accounts and crimes to charge him with, so they're like, fuck it, let him go. Isn't there, like, defiling a corpse? Isn't that a thing? Well, this is the original charge. Oh, okay. Um, maliciously destroying a grave and removing a body without authorization. Yeah. But, yeah, so he gets um, he gets to go, like, free, no, no problem. Awesome. And Carl, he's sort of a celebrity right now in terms of popularity. And the fucked up thing is the public was mostly on his side. So people were defending him. They paid his court and jailing fees. They offered to represent him for free. Like people fully supported him because they thought that they were actually in love. And like they thought like it was real between them. But it was mostly, I mean, there's no proof that she felt the same at all. It's just him even if she doing did, this. Even if she did, though, he dug up a, a grave and for, what, a decade slept with a a dead rotting body like that's disgusting and we also have one more small minor note just a small tiny minor note yeah. and this didn't come out during the trial this uh, came out like 30 years later uh, from the people that examined the corpse i thought you're gonna say it was his dick no <laughs> he said small tiny note <laughs> but when the corpse was taken from carl's house it was examined and they find that carl had made and inserted a paper tube into her vagina and they also said that her breasts, like these are the people examining the corpse. They said that her breasts felt very real, which that's a fucking, she's been dead for 10 years. Why are you feeling the tits? I know you have to examine the body oh, yeah. and the corpse and everything, but leave the titties out of it. Like, yeah, let's like leave I, the boobs out. Yeah, I hope that's not something they always do. Yo, Dylan, get in here, man. <laughs> Feel them tits. They're real. <laughs> Feel kind of real. real tits, yeah. boy. <laughs> it, was the, it was the fucking pit my ride, guys. Oh, my God. <laughs> The West Coast Customs guys <laughs> yeah. are all feeling yeah. on this dead at, titties. At the end, she had a GameCube in her pussy. <laughs> <laughs> if it was like in true West Coast Customs <laughs> style, they're like, yeah, we're going to bring her back. We're going to make her way better than she ever was. And she's still dead, but she does have the GameCube in her pussy. <laughs> so. Now, back to Carl, though. There's no real proof whether he fucked it or not. No. Yeah. Like the corpse? No, there's there's no yeah. proof. Yeah. There would be now, but yeah. Honestly, there's... though, I think it would be weirder if he didn't fuck it. Like, if he just it, like you there. know, like if I. Just lay there. It sounds gross and it sounds dumb, but if it would be, I think it's weirder if he didn't fuck it. That dude, sounds weird, but like this dude, and I'm not giving him any kind of credit. But if I woke up to just that fucking like face, like if somebody oh. showed me a picture of that face. I would never be able to sleep again. And this guy slept next to that. Like, imagine if somehow it accidentally, like, leaned over and was just staring right at you when you woke up. You know uh. what? Kevin, I'm actually on your side. I think he didn't have sex with her because he really thought he could bring her back and he was saving his, his sex for when she's actually alive and she could feel it. <laughs> That's not a bad one. No, I, I mean, I've been just jokefully defending oh. him. I really think he did have sex with it. But oh, yeah, I think did. it's... You son of a bitch. I really do think yeah, he it's... He had sex with it. I really do think it's worse if he didn't. Because it's just like... It's fucked up and sick to do it. But at least I would be like, okay, well, that's your reasoning behind it. Wait, see, so like... His penis might not even work. This would put him at 60, right? No, I think it was like close to 50, right? Wasn't it? Well, they did ask him during the trial if he ever did anything sexual with the corpse, but he told them, no, Your Honor, I did not, so. Did they ever do, like, a psychological, like, review of the guy or anything? I They did, actually. They did a few, mm. and I think 
it like some of them were different. Like some said, like he had problems. Some say he didn't. And I think a, it settled on him being like sane. Ser- what? Yeah. Like I was thinking, like well, everyone, like, the public is all on his side. They thought a that, ghost. Like, a ghost told him to take a body. Well, like I would think, it, like well, some kind of hysteria, or at least you like, know, something like that. I don't know. Just during this time, the public, the media was mostly on his side. Yeah. Plus, it sold a lot of newspapers and shit. Oh, I would imagine. I've got a question. If he was having sex with her, what do you think he was like using for lubrication? I don't know. I'm Spit. guessing. I'm guessing like like what's that baking stuff like Crisco or Crisco? something like that. So would that make him the Count of Monte Crisco? <laughs> oh Jesus! Oh my God! <laughs> oh shit, dude! Uh, Every fucking count, man. Now this part. <laughs> This part doesn't make any sense. Like, right after the notes I put about them playing, like, feeling her breasts and saying they felt very real. Yeah. I put, they are definitely real. They're very real. Get in here, Kevin's dad. Feel these beasts. <laughs> what the fuck? I don't even remember writing that. So, dad, if you snuck in, the, yeah. in here and wrote that on here, touche. I was will say, yeah, definitely was, it was definitely and, your dad. And that was the last time I ever slept over your house. <laughs> <laughs> Now, after the trial, as far as the body goes, luckily for Elena, like they were like, okay, she had her body taken from the mausoleum for seven years. She's She's been taken away. Mm. We need to do the right thing. And the funeral home had her body put on display so that thousands of people could come visit and take a look. Yeah, I think it was like 6,800 people fucking looked That's, at it. Dude, this Ridiculous. poor fucking girl, For, dude. And this all poor she did, girl. All she did was fucking tuberculosis. That's all she did. It was only because if she had a different hair color, this would never happen. Yeah. If she just, oh, yeah. He it was all because of how she looked. He would have fucked her this. and got her pregnant and completely forgot about her if she had blonde hair. No, they didn't have got her pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> so then after her body was on display... They finally put her body to rest in an unmarked grave somewhere in Key West. Jesus Christ. But before she was buried, Carl, this fucking guy right here, asked, Your Honor, could I please get the body back? Fuck is slow down, Romeo. They told him, Carl, fuck off, dude. No. Yeah, <laughs> come on, Jesus. How old was he then? Uh, he's. I think he's around 60 at this I'll time. I'll say, at... at Eventually, he's gonna be more fucking decomposed than the body if he doesn't, st- you know, stop trying. Yeah, I know he's like the fucking dude from Big Daddy <laughs> working at Hooters. <laughs> and uh, soon, Carl he would move away, and he would spend the rest of his days without her. But he did get a life-size effigy made from one of the death masks of her, hmm. and he did live with it, like as his companion. Quote. And also, the night before Carl moved away. He snuck into the mausoleum where she was first buried and left a bomb that blew that fucking thing up. Okay, that's kind of sweet. So it blew up. They don't know if it was actually him that did it, but mm-hmm. I mean, who else? It was him. Yeah, it was him. of course. That's kind of sweet, and actually. I, I also think he got he moved back in with his wife and daughter. Oh, Jesus Christ. I'm not 100% positive. I think he did, but then I don't think he was with him with him. I think he was dude, just living there. Dude, I don't know. I would say if his wife touched that dick, man. Oh, my ugh. God. Holy shit. He, like, moves back, and he's like, hey, honey. Hey, hey, where's your sister at? <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't even know she died. Yeah, yeah she died of tuberculosis, dad. It's- oh, also, Maria, oh, Elena's, like, entire family ends up dying from tuberculosis also. And Carl, he would pass away at the age of 75 in 1952. Mm. He was found dead on his floor. And okay. sometimes people like to romanticize this part of the story and say that he was found in the arms of the Elena effigy, but that's not true. Yeah. Like, that was, I believe, like a solid, like the top of like a sarcophagus, like a mummy one, how it's just like a solid carving on top of it. I think mm. that's like what it was. Yeah. But there were also rumors that he had found a way to switch out the bodies one last time. But that's, no. I don't see how that I mean, could have no. ever happened yeah, either. That's not what happened. But yeah, so that's a story. It's fucked up. It's an interesting story. I feel is. bad for uh, Maria Elena. Oh, yeah. that's, Poor girl. That sucks. But oh. yeah, so people either think this is a romantic story or just a fucking creep. The I, dude's fucked up. Like, yeah. that's fucking disgusting. I, f- I feel like the people that think that it's romantic are in prison now because their names are Mel Hall. <laughs> so it would be a little bit different if. Th- the love was reciprocated. Yeah. Like, if it was actually both ways. And, and if it wasn't but seven even then, years, it was seven years. But even then, yeah. you don't fucking dig up yeah. the body and, like, and just 
keep it and like, sleep with it and all that other yeah, shit. Like if one night he just got so fucking like just fucked up because he lost his, his, you know, his girl and he went and got the body and tried to revive it once and then just realized he couldn't do it and that was it. That'd be romantic as shit. We've cracked more Adam Sandler jokes than the times he probably fucked it, but he still fucked it. <laughs> and and we know he did, which is disgusting. And he still slept we with We don't us. know. We don't know. We slept with he slept with us we. He slept with this rotting corpse for We Yeah. <laughs> we all yeah. yeah, we did. all did, yeah. I don't think there's any way to like kinda make this guy like a hero out of that. It's still just disgusting. Yeah, it's pretty gross. And I, I mean, I don't know if that's still considered rape, but it's 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 rape. That's still kind of rape. It's, yeah, that's disgusting. Yeah, that's pretty gross. Uh, two, did you have anything you want to add before we do our, all of our closing shit? That was the case of Carl Tanzler, Count Dr. Carl Tanzler. Not a real fucking mm-hmm. count or doctor. Yeah, he also becomes the, the main character in the show, Frasier. <laughs> just Kelsey Grammer. I don't know. I don't, that's not even funny. All righty. So I guess we'll just say... Um, Thank you, everyone, for listening. If you haven't left us a review on iTunes, that would be awesome if you could leave us a five-star review. And then we will give you a shout-out, making an honorary brother for doing it. You can also reach us at brotherscommonplace at Gmail. You can send us mail there if you have any requests or you just want to say, hey, that's awesome. We like hearing from you guys. We also have a Twitter and an Instagram and a Facebook page, so like and follow all that stuff. So, yeah, once again, you guys are fucking killing me here. You make me want to go punch a dead body in the head. But uh, so what wh- what we're going to do is um, we're going to up the ante even more because I talked about the fucking theme song of Fresh Prince of Bel-Air last time and that wasn't good enough for you. So what we're going to do, since we've already talked about it a couple of times, is if you request it, Toof and Kevin will reenact the video of Last Dance with Mary Jane. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. So request that personally. And then leave us a five star review, even if it's not five stars. Leave us a fucking one star, but no, request no, that. No, no, maybe not that part. No. Okay. <laughs> nope. Just five. Five stars. star. Yep. Yeah. All right. So I finally did come up with some uh, words of wisdom. So Carl, um, after all, before he was found dead, um, he actually did try and find another Elena. He was walking around with a wagon, and he kept saying, "Bring out your dead! <laughs> Bring out your dead!" <laughs> Was that, that was the, that, that was the words of wisdom. <laughs> yeah, that's Phil, it. That just went with uh, the podcast. Yeah. And I, I will say, um, stay tuned to after our closing music. There might be a little bonus, uh, some bonus jokes for you there. So Ooh. be sure to listen. So alrighty, thank you everyone for listening. Be good, stay safe. Laugh the dark stuff. Hashtag Wildman. Hashtag Wildman. Hashtag Romeo. Hashtag Wildman. Hashtag Q Pretzel. Q Pretzel. Pretzel. Hashtag Pretzel Dog. Pretzel Dog. And you can tell everybody this is your plane. It may be quite simple and it's got no wings. I hope you don't mind, I hope you don't mind that I took a paper tube and shoved it up your corpse pussy for something to do. Lie in the grass next to the mausoleum. <laughs> You're just a notch in my bedpost, but you'll be there for a while. <laughs> I'm just a notch in your bedpost, but you're just a tube in your pussy. <laughs> Doesn't even make any sense. And I'll take with me the memories when I stuck that paper in your pussy. <laughs> It's so hard to say goodbye. Let me see her one last time, Judge. (laughs) I'm coming faster. (gasps) Obey your master. I made this paper. (laughs) I made this paper. It burns faster. Obey your master. Get it? Because like master of puppets because she's a puppet. Oh, master, master. (laughs) 
Master of puppets, I'm pulling your strings. Got metal rod to support your things. <laughs> Blinded by me, you can't see a thing. I got two glass eyes and some bling. Please, Carl, will you, will you please sing me that song you're singing, singing to me uh, last night? It. I don't get much sleep as a as a corpse, and it's the only thing that really makes me feel restful. Mm. He says, oh, "Of course, of course, yeah." Let it, let me start from where we left off. What do you always say to poor? <laughs> Everybody's going to the party, have a real good time. Making paper tubes and putting them in your corpse pussy. <laughs> Blast off! <laughs> That's what he says when he puts it in. Blast! Off. It's party time, and I just fucked a paper tube in your pussy. <laughs> where the, the fuck, fuck are, are you? you? <laughs> hey, he's like, where the fuck's the loo? <laughs> and like, like, why do I always fuck the poor? <laughs> like he, he, uh, he had a plan one night to have a buddy come over and like fuck it with him, and he's like, where the fuck is two? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and then me and Tim show up instead, and he goes, "Why do you always send the poor?" <laughs> <laughs> All right, you got one more. The all-new Toyota Rav4 asks, "What if? What if your ride was refined and rugged at the same time?" Introducing the all-new Rav4 Hybrid. 208 combined horsepower and standard all-wheel drive make it the most powerful Rav4. Plus, with its head-turning style and breakaway speed, it's bound to change the way you think of a hybrid. The all-new Rav4 Hybrid. Toyota. Let's go places. Horsepower. Ratings achieved using the required premium and leather gasoline with an octane rating of 91 or higher. Premium fuel is not used. Performance will decrease. And now, an ad from Dad. <clears throat> All right. Save money on car insurance when you bundle home and auto with Progressive. Can I take these off? All right. What is this? This looks good. Wow. That's what, well, man. Where did you get this? I'm talking to you with the hair. Yeah, where did you get this? It's good stuff. That's solid. That's not veneer. That's solid stuff. Progressive can't save you from becoming your parents, but we can save you money when you bundle home and auto. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company affiliates and other insurers. Discounts not available in all states or situations.